What's up guys and welcome back to the ultimate guide to Bloodborne. I almost said Dark Souls again. Um, <laughs> but today we're going to be doing Nightmare Frontier. Yeah, so some guides tell you to do Nightmare Frontier after Yahar Ghul. Nah, do it now. Be some guides also tell you to do Upper Cathedral before Yahar Ghul, but you don't listen to those guides. Yeah, you, yeah, you really don't. That's, that's completely wrong. Upper Cathedral is like very end of the game. So we're going to do Nightmare Frontier right now because there's some chunks in this area. The boss isn't too difficult. Um, and there's a... There's quite a lot of lizard, uh, wandering nightmares they're called in this game. Yeah, I mean, my reasoning for doing Nightmare Frontier at this point is because you, it's about as difficult as the enemies in Bergenworth. If anything, it's probably easier than Bergenworth. It's a little easier, I'd say, yeah. Especially since we have the Tronitus, it means that most of the enemies die very easily. Yeah, there is the one thing, though, that there are frenzy like the, the what are they called again? The lanterns? The stupid brain things. Yeah, brain the trust, brain they're actually things. called brain trust. No, um, they're not. They're, they called, are. they're called something They're else. called Brain Trust. Anyway, so at this stage, to get to Nightmare Frontier, you have to come to this part that's right of Amelia. So, yeah, so that's I'm, what we're I'm doing coming now. up on this roof right now because I don't want to scare the, the Wandering Nightmare, but I just fuck it up instead. Now, just before we got here, you would have seen... Um, what's her name again? The Crow. Uh, Eileen. Eileen. You would have seen her resting like out the front of the, the doors that lead to where Amelia's boss fight was. Don't talk to her yet because there's a there's an NPC hunter you have to kill who is incredibly difficult at your level. So we're going to come back to him later in the game yeah. and finish Eileen's quest line there. So right now, just get the nightmare, take care of these guys. This guy was a pain in the ass. I'm rusty as fuck, by the way. I just want you guys to know that. Yeah, like, I'm you should, incredibly rusty right now. You should have an easier time killing these guys. These guys at this part of the game, at this level with the equipment and stuff, you should have no trouble at all. These yeah. will be pretty easy hunters compared to other ones anyway. We missed out this part of the game. We could have done this part of the game like earlier, yeah. but really our guide meant that you didn't need to go this way until you had to go to Nightmare Frontier. This guy annoys the hell out of me. This is a, this is a hunter that has two guns and infinite bullets, so you can imagine how how fun this is. So I'm trying to pull him away because I know there's a wandering nightmare down there, but I can't remember just how far down it is, so I don't want to like scare it away. So I'm just trying to pull him over towards me, and he actually annoys the fucking life at me during this fight. I always hate this guy. The the, the rifle spear is relatively easy to parry with the physical attacks because there's a decent enough wind up to it. Yeah. Um, now the reason that we want to do Nightmare Frontier at this point, at least in my my own testing, is if you go if you do Bergmouth and do everything you've done, and then you go straight to Yahar Ghoul, the difficulty spikes up a lot because you don't have that extra defense from the levels that you would get from Nightmare Frontier. So Frontier is definitely a good thing to do at this stage because, you know, there's lots of materials, it's relatively easy and it will get you really prepared for your Hargul. Yeah, you also, can see how rusty I am being parried twice by a fucking rifle spear NPC. Uh, also one thing to note is if you haven't got the, if you're following our build anyway, if you haven't got the, uh, the tonsil stone. No, not tonsil stone. The gemstone that we got at the end of the Bergmerth episode, the last one, you want to go get that uh, gemstone to put in your Tronitus because it will give it 16% more. Oh yeah, the bolt gem that's in at the very beginning of Yahar Ghul, yeah, you want that. Yeah. It gives your Tronitus a nice boost in damage when you buff it. Um, so this guy's finally fucking about to die. I don't know why this guy gave me so much fucking trouble. Like, he always gives me the most annoying amount of trouble. I hate him. I just wish he wasn't a thing. No, it's mad cause bad. I just hate him, I hate the one reborn, and I hate Rom. Why can't they all just vanish? <laughs> yeah, to be fair, the one reborn shit. Anyway, so we're just doing, I mean, this bit is for a much earlier part of the game, yeah. but the only thing you get from these wandering nightmares is like normal blood shards, and at this point you really didn't need them. And if you were to come here just before or after Amelia or Hemwick or whatever, these guys could actually give you a a big the guy, the guy with trouble. the Tonitrus would take away about half of your health with a buffed hit. So yeah. now they're not really that much of a challenge. So that that's not too bad. Now what you see me do there was go back up the stairs because the, the, there's drop downs to get on top of the houses. So of course we had to drop down to get that item. Now if you're here before Rom, there will be a bagger there, like the kidnapper there. So that's why we're here after Rom because now he's not there. Yeah. See. How Although at this out. stage, even if he was there, it wouldn't be an issue now. But I mean, obviously I'm, he's an issue then. So we're just going to plunging attack all of these guys. So I know that guy dropped Quicksilver bullets. I don't think I ever went back for them because it's You've just bullets. You've got so many at this point. Yeah, I think, I think by the time, like, where we are right now is that we've just finished, we just finished recording up to Wet Nurse today, or beating Wet Nurse today. 
and I've got like 90 bullets in the inventory so I'm not really concerned about two or three. Yeah. Now at this stage these guys are a little bit weaker than the other ones so you should absolutely annihilate them yeah, with a couple of hits. Yeah, just buff your tonitress and go in there and hit them a few times and you kill them. Now there's two wandering nightmares down here. If you scare them away don't worry you can just use the quick reload trick as ever. However, but I'm going to try not to do that. Yeah, now at this point these Wonder Nightmares again only drop bloodstone shards, so you won't even really need them um, at all. It doesn't like see. This is the thing that I don't understand about these Wandering Nightmares is that you would ideally be here after the, after the forest at the earliest, because that's when you would get the tonsil stone to go to the lecture hall from here. Yeah. So, so why aren't they? At least why aren't they twin? at least twin shards? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Why not at least twin shards? And these guys are definitely a lot easier than the ones in the forest anyway in terms of how much damage you can just Well maybe, I mean we're doing no, a lot more how, damage Look how little damage they're doing to me now compared to what they were doing in the forest that Yeah because you more. have more defence and health yes, from levelling up but not that much more yeah, The forest was only a few fucking episodes ago Yeah, yeah. I mean I think you're, you're forgetting just like how I crazy the defence boost is from levelling up Which if the defence really should be armour but whatever yeah. That's neither here nor there nor a discussion for this so well, now that one on. dropped twin shards. Oh, cool. So, oh, that. Um, so lead elixir. People who use lead elixir in PvP are the most annoying people to deal with because it's just iron flesh. Anyway, right. So once you have the tonsil stone, you can stand on this. Uh, well, not the platform, but you can stand just in, in the front doorway. here. And the amygdala will grab you and immediately frenzy you because that's fun. And this is how you get to Nightmare Frontier. Well, actually, this is how you get to the this lecture hall. This is how you hall. get to the lecture hall before the One Reborn. You can skip this entire thing and come back to it after Yahar Gula if, if you want to. But as we said, we find it easier to go to Nightmare Frontier than do Yahar Gul yeah. when you're a little bit better off. Um, there are quite a few chunks. There's, a, there's a, like, what, two or three Wandered Nightmares that drop chunks in Nightmare Frontier? Uh, no, there's only... A... Two? No, I think there's only like one chunk in Nightmare Frontier. There's a wandering nightmare that drops one. I think there might be two that drop chunks. I'm not sure. Can't but remember. we'll see on the way. Nightmare Frontier is such a big place that it's tough to remember like what all the little details are about it. So this lecture hall is apparently in some other kind of dimension and you get transported here before Nightmare Frontier at this point yeah. or before um, Nightmare of Menzis after the Wonderborn. Yeah. So this is, you get transported here and then this is like a segue area between the nightmare areas. Yeah, this is a middle ground. Um, I think it's purely here for lore purposes because from the gameplay perspective it would be better if it wasn't. Yeah, it would just, it, I mean, as far as I'm concerned it would make more sense to just be transported to the nightmare area via whatever method. Yeah. Now, watch this guy jump, uh, drop him down and just kill him. Now, the Tronitus should kill these guys in like two hits. Uh, two or three hits. We were keeping, we we're not using the Tron, it's using it conservatively because we don't want it to break through the level because the, yeah, nightmare, the nightmare level is quite big. So. That is one of the things about the Tonitrus is that it, its durability does decrease pretty quickly and of course there's no such thing in this game which is even remotely close to repair powder. So there's no way to like repair your weapons outside of the Hunter's Dream. There's no way to do a lot of things outside of the Hunter's Dream in this game. Yeah, that's but true. repair your weapons is definitely one of the most important ones, especially when it comes to the Tonitrus, a weapon which... It, it degrades pretty quickly overall. Um, I don't think its durability is the highest either, but the trade-off is the insane damage which is just too good to pass up. Yeah, this, it really does. <laughs> because everything is so weak to lightning, a buff Tronitus will like annihilate most enemies in the game. Yeah, definitely. It's almost unfair. So, I'm trying to get through this door and yeah, I just, I don't know why I rolled. I, I don't know why I you just didn't even kill them, but... Because these guys are worth, these guys are more hassle than it's worth really in the end, especially when there's that many of them. I don't mind if there's a few of them, but these guys really aren't that big a deal that I'd, I'd rather just go past them than fight ten of them. Well, regardless, if you do need to fight them, then the Tronitus will kill them very, very quickly. Yeah. Sock Cleaver kills them in about four hits if you don't extend it as well, so it's not as if you don't have the tools to kill them at easily. <laughs> So that was Augur Vibriatus, that's, um, that's an arcane tool which uh, applies magic damage to your weapon but you get a better bonus from things like fire paper and bolt paper so our, the Augur of Vibriatus isn't really... Yeah, when you work it out the... Oh no wait, Augur of Vibriatus is the snake hand, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, Empty Phantasm, never mind, I got yeah. it wrong. Empty Phantasm shells the magic buff. Augur of Vibriatus is the... the Technical arm. Yeah, the hentai arm. Which is bad, but it's not... It does have knockdown, which can be yeah. pretty good, and the range on the knockdown is nice, but the damage is just not worth it. Yeah. Nothing nothing in Arcane is worth it other than utility stuff. So there was our first Wonder Nightmare. Now, a thing to note is if you're playing online, you will always be, in, be able to be invaded in Nightmare Frontier. Yeah. 
but we're gonna show you where the bell ringing woman is but so we're doing this guide offline obviously because doing it online would just add more time to it and make it less consistent so yeah. let's not do that now that guy's really easy to take care of because you can sneak up and charge attack him like you just seen us do so um, and that item's literally just there because free stuff I guess so Moving on, there's a couple of night wonder nightmares here. There's, there's a big one down here that I'm trying to get to without alerting it. It's like right below me. But the problem with the big ones is that if you do try and plunge attack it, and you end up with like a cliff to your backside, um, what can happen is they can do like the spinning tail attack, and it, it does have knockback, and it will knock you off. It's done it to me a couple of times. Yeah, so try to not let that happen. The one right at the end has killed me a couple of times, because like, I usually plunge attack it, and then just R1 spam it. Now, these big guys here look a lot more tougher than they actually are, so yeah, you shouldn't have a trouble here. However, they are quite, quite tough in Nightmare of Menzis, but Nightmare Frontier, yeah. they're okay. You might actually, you'll probably do more damage with the saw cleaver because it has the beast damage multiplier on it yeah. as well. On, uh, well. If your saw cleaver is equally as leveled up as your Tronus, ours yeah. isn't at this stage. But with a fire paper, you should do more damage than what the saw cleaver does, potentially. Mm, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so there's a couple of hunters in this area, and there's, you know, they're actually, they're, they're okay, they're about as difficult as they should be. Nightmare Frontier is definitely not harder than you should be at this point. This is exactly where we yeah. think you should be. Yeah, like that. This is this is where I would want to be at the level we're at right now. Anyway. These guys are definitely easier than the hunter in Bergenworth, That's for sure. So. Um. Yeah. There are two of them, so just be careful of that. Sometimes you only aggro one. Sometimes the other one shows up. Uh, I I really don't know what the, what the deal is, but um, just the same as any other NPC. Buff your Tornatrice and then just smash them in the face a few times. Yeah. Um. Obviously, try and get the parries if you can. Look at that. That the a, a dash to the side and then just at the last moment it, it hopped forward a little bit so I didn't I didn't fall off. Lucky. It was so good. That was pro. What are you talking about? So you want to try and drag them back past the bridge. Yeah. Because it's a little bit more open. There's a little bit less things that you can trip over in this little clearing. And at I, the very I, least, you can't fucking fall off the bridge. I so. have no idea why I'm playing so bad in this video. Like I really don't. Um, and you can see from the gameplay from earlier in the guide that I, I, I play fine. I'm just getting shit on today. I don't know what it is. Nah, you don't play fine. You're one to talk. How many tries it take you to get Shadows of the Army? So you want to patch up, you want to pile <laughs> this guy. Yeah, if, I mean, if this guy. Now, um, as far as where this guy is actually easier to parry because the, there's a, lot, a large wind up for the transformed state of the whip. Yeah, the but, cane. Yeah. Because there's definitely weapons that are easier to parry than others. Yeah. I mean, that's the trade-off with the whip. You have very good crowd control because it's a wide open angle, but it's a slow wind-up, which means it's easy to parry. Yeah. So that's them taken care of, and we're just going to, you know, just... There's a wandering nightmare just down in front of us. I spotted the uh, the little purple, like... Smoke. Yeah. So I spotted that. I'm assuming that's, like, something to do with smell, considering they're, they're, it's just dead things together. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, or it's like a gameplay thing so you can spawn. Anyway, so there's an item here. I think this is a chalice dungeon type No, thing. this is a rune. Is it not? No, I think... That, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, fading light. light. Okay, there's so a madman's knowledge behind us. So I can see there's like a wandering nightmare down in the swamp that we're going to go for in a second. Yeah, it's like just there. It's just it's just on the edge of the swamp. So I'm going to drop down and then um, get the madman's knowledge first. And then we're going to go for the, the wandering nightmare because we need to backtrack anyway. Well, we need to backtrack a little bit. Now, this swamp actually leads like to the second part of levels. A whole big fucking double back windy yeah. bit for the other items. <clears throat> so you could essentially just take this. If you follow the left wall of this swamp round, it will take you to like the exit yeah. of the swamp. <clears throat> it will take you to amygdala. But of course, we need to we need to get everything. So this cave right here. So you run down to the swamp and take a right. And as soon as you start going uphill in the little cave, that's where the multiplayer. Uh, bell ringing woman will spawn. She's the one that brings phantoms and uh, red invaders into your world. So if you don't want to be invaded, you got to kill her. Um, and she'll be there immediately from coming out of this area, as opposed yeah. to you using the bell and it spawns. Yeah. Her. As, as soon as soon as you as soon as you uh, warp to this area, or as soon as a loading screen's completed, the bell ringing woman will come back. Pro uh, the bell ringing woman returns. Yeah. Or like shows up. So this cave leads to the whole windy get other items part of this level. Yeah. This is the this is the long. This, this part links to the swamp from another entrance into the swamp, so there's two, yeah. two ways into the swamp. You can go that way to just exit out of it, or you can come this way and get the other stuff. So there's a lot of these guys that are throwing rocks at us, so we need to try and get them as quickly as possible. Yeah, the rocks do, do a whole lot, lot of damage. damage. Yeah, and they have like that lingering hitbox as well, which I'm not too fond of. 
where after the rock blows up you can walk past it when it's faded out and it will still hit you. Yeah, chances are Fuck. running around this area will scare away the other wandering nightmare that's sort of floating about around here, so we need to quit and reload and get it again, but we'll show you that. So okay, this so is... I went back to the wandering nightmare to show you guys where to go, so there's a landmark. Yeah. Essentially, so you just go up here to your right and there'll be a... Uh, is it Madman's? No, it's Cold Blood Flower Bud. And that's a Chalice Dungeon type item. Yeah, and that's a tough thing to say. Um, so yeah, up here there's another ogre, and he has his uh, his friend from across the valley pelting me with rocks at the same time here. <laughs> pelting? Yeah. I, I don't know how that wasn't a backstab. I also don't know how it missed you either. You're there. I'm just going to assume that he's shite. Ah, he's, he's got a bent name. There you see that example that, of lingering, that lingering hitbox. hitbox. Yeah, so the hitbox should be cleared by then because the rocks exploded and there's nothing, you know, like the, the, the graphics are fading out. Yeah. And it's I don't know why you didn't just run and hit him. Because but, there was whatever. a rock coming at me, and you can't stop the rock. Dark Souls yeah, 1 taught us that. Fucking rocks. I know. Okay, oh, this. So, to get bolt paper. To be fair, it's sort of worth it. I mean, it is good. worth it. The bolt paper is... Just, the amygdala's... Like, the bolt paper comes in handy with amygdala. The bolt paper really comes in handy with the... So, the here bolt. there should be a wonder nightmare. Chances are, by you killing that guy, that's what scared away. Yeah, most the, likely that's the what scared nightmare. away. So we're gonna quit reload here. Not at this point. Um, I'm in, we're at this to point. I'm, it on yeah, the map. At this point, I'm telling you there's one here, and you go, "No, there's not." And I went, "Yeah, there is." And then you just continue on, and then I tell you go back, and then we find it. Right. Okay. But um, I mean, I'd say come up here anyway, because that guy is still up there chucking rocks. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably worth actually just killing the rock guy, and then if you've not killed the one or nightmare, go back and get it then. Yeah. So like th this area has a few lead elixirs, and essentially what lead elixir does is it increases your defense quite a lot, and um, you don't stagger when you get hit either. And in PvP, sometimes when they attack you, their weapon will deflect, so you just go for trades with lead elixir. Yeah. Um, lead elixir is really good uh, against some bosses. I mean, I guess lead elixir would be best used against Rom because of all the damage you can then like sort of get rid of when all the spiralings attack you and shit like that. Mm, mm. Um. You can't run on the lead elixir, but you can still roll and dash, so, so it's not that bad. there's our quit out, and... Yeah, here's the Wandering Nightmare. This place was really annoying because there's a Wandering Nightmare near the end of this place that just wouldn't return. Like, yeah, it just wouldn't come back. And we, we should explain why. that, definitely. So, um, there is one, in the, and we knew it was in the right place. We were searching for it. It just wouldn't spawn, so... We... Sometimes the quit reload trick doesn't work, in which Apparently. case we went back to the Hunter's Dream and then returned, and that brought the lizard back. So just stand on the end of this right here. I went a little bit too far, but luckily it still went down. So just stand on the tip of it and it will drop the bridge down. Um, yeah, we made the mistake in the test footage of going off it on the wrong angle. Yeah, and I went a little within. bit too fast. Yeah. So another big wandering nightmare. So just be careful. They have like this, this spinning tail attack, which has like, a full 360 degree hitbox and it will knock you back as well. Um, but, but that's, that's it for, for up here. Yeah, now we're right. going to go speak to an old friend. Well, now we're going to go interact with an old friend. Yeah. Um, friend? Yeah. He's a phony. They could have made him a hyena and they didn't. They made him a fucking spider. Yeah, I know. So, uh, to save on backtracking, you want to go down and get this item here first? Yeah, we're going to go down and get that. So, this is like up top is progress. Um, so, what we're going to do is because it patches knocks you down into an area where you don't make progress essentially. You come back, it's like it's a dead end to get the last item in that area, so you don't make much progress. So we're gonna go there, get the item first. Then we're gonna huntsman, we're gonna hunter's mark back to the lantern, and then the shortcut bridge that we just dropped, that tombstone that we just dropped down by standing on the edge of it. We're gonna take that back up and then continue from this path after we've done like the patches interaction. Yeah. <clears throat> so this way it saves time because otherwise what we need to do is go through and get every item, and then come back to patches and then come back to get the item that's right next to patches. So that way is progress. We want to go deal with patches right now first. Um, I meant to open up my inventory and for some reason I rang my beckoning bell. I've no idea why. Pro. But um, so that there look that message that message there the one with the rays of light coming out of it that looks like one of those ones where you summon an NPC from it that sort of deal. But it isn't. That's just a, that's like a developer hint as well. It's really annoying that they use the same thing for both. Yeah but you can't summon anyone from here, so don't worry. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting on Antidote and I'm putting on Sedative because there's a frenzy thing down here as well, um, and it does fucking magic pixel me. Yeah, okay, so getting booted off the thing with patches, blah, 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 blah. 
should have cut out this footage. But... It's fine, it's a nice cutscene, we can let people see it. Yeah. Fucking bastard he is. I mean, we should expect it by now. We've we should... done it in what? Every single game he's been in, he's done it. Yeah. You right. can't, you, look, stop trying to change him, just love him for who he is. <laughs> Alright? Or just fucking bash his stupid face in with a hammer the first moment you see him. I mean, you could just go with the much more humane approach and just like use an insect repellent on him to keep him away from you. Nah, boot, big boot. Alright, just flatten him. So, Steal okay, him. so there's two items here and a running away wandering nightmare. So, you need to get the nightmare. Now, when you land, you want to go to the right. Always go to the right because you know which way you're, you're going the right way if you run into a bigger group of wandering nightmares, essentially. Well, nah, it's more like a, well, yeah, essentially, but I mean, you can see like the entrance to a cave there. Don't go that way, just go yeah, this way. Yeah, that just takes you back out of the swamp. We want to get this stuff. So, I mean, you don't need to hunt us, Mark. You can go back this way if you feel like it. But there are three small wandering nightmares here and one large wandering nightmare. Um, yeah. And then at the other, and like fumbled down this swamp as well, there's um, a frenzy brain who's guarding the messenger's gift, which is an arcane tool which turns you into like the little messages. It's like it's kind of like Chameleon from the previous games, but it only has one state that you turn into, and it's like an open message. Yeah. Is what you turn into, like little message interactions you can do, player notes and stuff so like that. That's us uh, quitting out and reloading to spawn another two. Only get yep. once when you do it again. Yep, these guys scurry pretty quickly, and unfortunately, there's a lot of obstacles in the way in this place as well. There are a lot, there's like a lot of clutter in the swamp area. It's yeah. really annoying. So we have to quit and reload again and get the lizard again. And Lizard's as we are nightmare. cool, we cut out the loading screens for you. Yeah, so you don't have to go through 45 seconds every time we try to fucking do something. Yeah. And um, I'm rolling the wrong way here. No, wait, I'm not. I'm rolling the right way. Yeah. So you want to continue. Um, in the direction you were going in when you were going towards the lizards essentially so this is the frenzy brain now this is the battle of battles right here this is a roller coaster ride so many times i almost die but this this thing just annihilates me over and over and over again because frenzy's op that's me frenzied and now i'm mashing my triggers to get out of this bullshit grab it's only so attack is this grab we discovered if you use uh, a, a, a Right, if you use fire paper on the saw cleaver, it seems to knock it back a little bit more than using the tron. And attack. there's the magic pixel and the frenzy kicks in. Yeah. So try to let that not happen. You might want to equip the frenzy defense rune. If you have it, you might want to also put the grave mask on because it has a uh, pretty decent frenzy resistance. Yeah. But as you can see, uh, fire paper and saw cleaver uh, was a bit of an yeah. easier option. I, th I think fire has a bit of, bit more knockback than lightning. It, it definitely seems to with, uh, when it comes to things that are weak to it. Yeah. And I think those guys are definitely weak to fire. They might actually be weaker to bolt. I've never tried. So there's Messenger's Gift. I'm just going to mark back so we don't need to go all through that swamp again. Yep. And because we use the Hunter's Mark, we don't get to cure our poison because why give us any sort of like even an inch of convenience? Yeah. Why so um, now we're like, going like back we said, to patches. If we went the swamp <clears throat> way we would have to go all the way around and whatever, but if we just mark back, it means we just go up this bit, get the item we missed and just continue on. So, yeah, it's, e it's just easier overall. <coughs> you could save the mark if you wanted, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so now that we're here, um, I forget to go get Patches as item until like a second from yeah. now. Um, but there is a Wandering Nightmare up here, so I need to get it now that it's spotted me. Yeah. So as you can see, there's a lot of wandering nightmares here, but we do get all of them, yeah. don't worry. And because it's our second time here, Patches won't kick us down and be a shit about it. Now, you can't interact with Patches for whatever reason. This is like the only thing Patches does here. You don't get to talk to him again until after the one reborn. Yeah. Because we already spoke to him in the lecture hall. We spoke to him through the door. And yeah, this, this is like the last of Patches. You don't even really get anything from doing this part other than the messenger's gift, which you can get if you just go the other way anyway. So now dropping down here, um, the reason why we went that way is because there was an item up there and of course drop getting that item and then dropping down here we're still able to pick up everything pretty quickly and um, these guys drop cold blood by the way which is really good like the rank six version of it yeah the soul it's a few it's, thousand souls yeah a but few thousand bloods bloods yeah mm -hmm. blood bucks blood bucks so yeah here's the item that's like sort of down below yeah stunning deep sea another defense rune Maybe a resistance rune, it might be poison or something like that, I can't remember. Maybe, but they all have like very similar names, so it's hard to differentiate. Yeah, all the lake and sea runes are like defense. I think lake is defense and sea is resistance. I think that's the that's the, the line in the sand. Maybe. So over there, there's an antidote and another wonder nightmare. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick this one up and make a dash for the wonder nightmare. That was nightmare a madman's knowledge. Oh, right, you mean that's an antidote up there? Right? Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. 
So yeah, just getting the Wonder Nightmare. As soon as you lock on, you'll be able to dash through the swamp a lot quicker as well, by the way. Um, so we lock onto the Wonder Nightmare as soon as possible so we can get to it quicker using the uh, forward dashes. So as you can see to the left there, that's where that uh, the, like the entrance to the swamp was with that first yeah. Wonder Nightmare. Um, you know, you should be able to recognise where it is. Yeah. So from that entrance with that Wonder Nightmare we were talking about to the swamp, you just want to dash forward and get that item there and then Just hug. keep keep the wall on your left essentially when you're yeah. going through this swamp. You, you eventually come to like a, an, an upwards hill. Um, after this next squid kid monster thing. Um, definitely not a kid. Definitely not a kid, no. It's probably some that kind of no squid. That is no child of mine. Um, so yeah, now we're going up here. Now there's two wonder nightmares, so I'm, we're going to run up and take the one on the right. Um, just because when I'd done this the last time I tried this, um, it's after the test I managed to get both, but unfortunately it just took one too many hits to get that, that other one. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly difficult <laughs> to actually get both. So Yeah, because they both split and run in opposite directions as soon as they see you, both of them, so yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. Well, bye. <laughs> I forgot I'd done that. Yeah. So nice. there's an item up here as well, so I might grab that. Clear, Clear deep, deep sea. sea, so that'll be more resistances. And two bloodstone shards, and then we're going to quit and reload for the wandering nightmare that's going to spawn right in front of us. So now we can grab that, and I then... I think there's only one more item in the swamp now. Yeah, I think it's another cold blood flower bud. Yeah, it is. It's right over in the middle of the swamp on our right. Yeah, something like a sort of perch thing. So this, the, like, the little platform we're about to get onto, by the way, you have to go this way to get onto it because it's, it's like really stupid terrain. Because it's, it's strange, it took me... Because I thought you'd be able to go up the tombstone that's like right there on yeah. the left when we picked it up. I thought you'd be able to go up that, but no, you have to go around the back of it. So you'll it's be like constantly annoying. pelted with shit this entire time you're here, so yeah, just try and avoid that. Yeah, you'll be constantly poisoned as well, so... I don't know why I'm just not getting visceral openings right now. I thought that, I thought those two looked pretty fucking good for viscerals. It was, it's, well, I mean, it's obviously been... You're just bad. At, at, like. I mean, playing. I guess that's, that's just it, isn't it? Okay, so we're coming to the next part of Nightmare Frontier. So Up you... against another frenzy brain, so we're going to put on our fire paper, and then I'm just going to charge it. Like, I'm just going to go gun ho And yeah. I go fire paper, and then just get the R1 in the set that is ready. <sighs> So, so thankfully I'm able to kill it before it, it gets me. Yeah. And thankfully. now there's a wandering nightmare just down here which we're going to plunge attack with our fire paper before it gets away. And it almost got me with the tail attack there and it almost sent me off the edge. So I got really lucky there. But try out that method. That method usually works for me. It's like a... It probably has about an 80% success rate. And maybe like one in five times it's going to knock you off the edge which is pretty nice. It's at the very least not that risky. Wow, you're just making as much noise as possible today, aren't you? Sorry, my foot was sore. Anyway, so another wandering nightmare here for fuck. There's so many. There, there's, there are there's quite still a few. loads more. We found ones that weren't uh, marked. Like there's one in the swamp area that's coming up. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know we're seeing swamp areas. If you another swamp area coming up, um, there's one that wasn't marked as well that we managed to spot. So it's lilacs down here. So there's kind of like two bits that branch backwards when you go down from yeah. the main hill. Yeah. So then there is there's right. So there should be a wonder nightmare on right there. Yeah, but just like just down in front of us. But it's not there for some reason. It should be like right here. So instead, I'm going to get the one that is down here. Yeah. And if you if you quit and reload, chances are the other one should appear. But it didn't appear for us it, until yeah, it just, later it just on. Refused. So it should spawn right here where I'm standing right now is where the wonder nightmare should be. But for some reason, it wasn't returning. So we quit and reload like five or six times in a row, so we just cut all that out once we get yeah. the Hunter's Mark because that's the most important thing. So we're going to equip that right away as well because it's always nice to have like, it's just, a, it's just a good habit to get into to have like Hunter's Mark or Homeward Bones or something like that just in a really easy to access area. Yeah. Just in case you ever need them. So now we've uh, just went back to the centre of the swamp and as you can see there's a Wandering Nightmare right in the middle. So when you see that item just look to your right and you'll see the Wandering Nightmare in the corner. Yeah. And this is like just out in front of amygdala, just at the bottom of where we're saying the wandering nightmare refused to yeah. spawn. Yeah, so I, you can see there where we went up, and yeah. so, that, so we just you know we're at the bottom of that. And now we're gonna go this way because Tony mentioned there's a wandering nightmare like dead ahead right now, so we're gonna try and maximize the damage, of course. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly where it is in the map. We're gonna go up here and run to the right. Now that I've spotted it, <clears throat> we're gonna go to the right and try and get a plunging attack on it, but it obviously gets away. So yet again. Another quick reload, so we're going to cut out that sequence for you again. 
And now we're just going to plunge attack the uh, the lizard and the squids as well. With the Tornatrus for a nice one shot on all three of them. To be fair, those ones, those ones are kid squids. I mean, yeah, those ones are kid squids, you're right. Oh well. Oh well. So now I'm running back here because it finally, finally came back, I think. No, it's not. No, it doesn't come back until after we go back to the dream, doesn't it? No, yeah. Oh well, what a bitch. I know. So yeah, I'm looking for it, like where the fuck is it? In case what happened was that that one dropped down and that's the one that I killed and the actual Wonder Nightmare that I thought I killed was in like another section or some shit like that, I don't know. So anyway, we're going back to the dream to level up at this point. Yeah, we've got 52,000 souls as well as we've picked up a lot of cold blood packets. Um, as well as we did pick up a chunk or two. Um, oh, it may not be... Oh, no, no, it's not this point. This point, um, we go back just before we At this point, we're just getting the shortcut in case we die. Oh yeah, because the next section we're coming up against there's a, there's like a very big poisonous swamp area like where you just got that last lizard actually. We're gonna go explore there to get the few items that are there. Yeah. Um. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass. And now I'm just showing you like where this elevator is. Um. So this takes you like right at the start of Nightmare Frontier. So like right up there is where the wolf would be sitting with its back to you. Yeah. So it's just so you have a bearing on where the the shortcut elevator is. So coming back down here and we're gonna sweep up the rest of the items in the big swamp. Yeah. Well the second big swamp, whatever. Yeah, we'll call this lower swamp. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna hug the left wall to get one the first item, essentially. <clears throat> yeah, there's like a little ramp leading down here which I'll lead you to the item. So when you when you grab this next item <clears throat> Now the way Tony described it is that I want to go to the right after I grab that item right there. But when you grab that item, you're gonna be facing a different direction, so you want to do a 180 when you grab this item. Yeah. So like I'm here, so I want to go more. So like that's 90. Yeah, so you I want to be like more, more 45 to the degrees to the right and get the other item. Yeah. There. It? Yeah. So like Tony then tells me where the item is because I'm in mass confusion at this point. <laughs> but this is essentially just going back into the the arse end of this cave. Yeah. So there's the brain, which you don't actually need to deal with, thankfully. Yeah, I mean, an easy way of doing this is if you go to, like, if you just stick at one side of the cave and then just follow it round. So this is Tony telling me that he, he didn't give me the right directions and that I have to go back because he's an idiot. That was actually you're an idiot for not realising what I meant, but okay. No, 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 you just didn't give me good enough directions. So getting that, uh, another blood packet, and as you can see, I mean, this is sort of easy to pick up because... You're just in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> it's right next to the bolt hunter's marks. So now we're going back into the cave. I think I do deal with the brain anyway, don't I? Or do yeah, I just do. fucking ignore it? No, no, you do deal with it. I don't remember if there's anything behind it. I don't I don't think there was. So these squids are like never really an issue, ever. Nah, kid squids aren't really a big deal. Even the adult squids aren't. Anyway. The adult ones do have this like charging fucking flailing oh, yeah. attack that does a shitload of damage. Yeah, you don't even need to kill this one, do so you? So the... Saw Cleaver's four hits whilst buffed seem to be enough yeah. that you didn't even I didn't even need to kill that. Nah, I know, but it does. That was revenge for the one from earlier. It does. They do drop pretty good gems, so yeah, they have a chance to drop cursed gems, which means the cursed gems always have a downside. Though, like they'll always have something like you'll do less damage to a certain type of uh, enemy, or like your weapon will degrade a little bit quicker, or it'll use more stamina or something like that. Cursed gems have a variety of negative drawbacks. But they usually have some pretty good positives yeah. to, to weigh that, like to, to balance against it anyway. So just pulling out the Tornatrus because these squids get fucking destroyed by it. And these are the big ones that have the flailing attack. Yeah. They're really annoying. So that thing was clear deep sea there, and we're, there's like one more item that we're going to pick up. Yeah. Uh, so I was just showing you on the map at this point. Yeah, so I have to go back out and then hug the wall on the left again. Yeah. Because like this cave, this cave forks to both sides. Yeah, <clears throat> it forks like three. Yeah. So. Uh, so now we need to deal with this uh, kid squid dad. I guess this is a dad squid. Dad squid, yeah. But um, this is the last item, and then of course we're gonna hunt this mark back because now it's time to go back to the dream. Um, this guy dropped me a cold blood packet, so that's fucking awesome. Nice. How nice of him. Okay, so back in the dream. So now pop all the cold blood that you have, uh, rank up your weapon, etc, etc. Do all that stuff and um, check your runes as well, of course. You did pick up a, a HP rune if you wanted to use it. Was it the HP rune? Yeah, it was the 5% HP rune that you pick up from there. No, you, you picked, picked up, up the stamina rune. Oh no, it was 10% HP. Never mind. Yeah. Why am I so fucking confused? I hate the 10% HP one is 
worthwhile. So. Yeah, the 10% HP one is definitely worth it. Because then you'd have 10% HP, 10% stamina bonus, as well as you'd have the Moon Rune on there for some extra uh, blood bucks. Yeah. Which is always good. We highly recommend just having the Moon Rune on like, the full time you're playing through mm. the game because it just means that you end up levelling up so much more than you normally would. Yeah. So, like, this Crescent Gem that we had there was a good example. It was a cursed one where it has that the overall attack of the weapon goes up by 11%, but the attack also goes down by 4%. So what that would then do is like that was bad in the Tonitrus because what it would what it did was it only buffed the physical attack and it would then lower any uh, any other attack damage like the bolt damage yeah. would have been lowered so we didn't want to use that in the Tonitrus so we used the saw cleaver instead. Um, and, and in the case of the saw cleaver, it's pretty much just plus seven percent. Yeah, because the saw cleaver doesn't use split damage. So now we're just stocking up in bolt paper because we just want to keep our insight uh, low. Fire no paper. Reason, uh, fire paper. Yeah, sorry. Um, there's no reason to have insight be too high anymore. Like, there's no reason to have high insight in this game period, you might as well just spend it on stuff that you can use, like fire paper and bolt paper, which yeah. we'll be getting soon. So, that's so we have a lot of cold blood packets. So we started at 62,000. And level 56. And level 56. And by the end of Nightmare Frontier, we're at 94,500 and we're going to be probably level 58. You mean 60. 50, 60. Nice. Level 60, so that was us just getting our strength up, as, as we said, now it's time to dump any strength for the cannon. So we're at 21 strength now, uh, we're going to get to 30 strength, then we're going to go to the 13 skill, and then we're going to go arcane a little bit for the beast roar, because it's really handy for PvE and PvP, and for the old hunter's bone, because it's really, it's really cool. Yeah, it's it's just fancy, I yeah, like fancy so, things. I mean, obviously you could like skip this part into if you just wanted to get to amygdala but you know whatever yeah so we're just stocking up and everything like refilling everything because we're going to be really prepared for amygdala um no, so am am amygdala said it was all of it overall amygdala is not really a difficult boss um you were kind of having problems with it just because it was yeah, doing things was that normally doesn't me. yeah like the, those she has a, a few attacks that normally don't come out and she was just like anything I did, Amygdala just had a counter for when I was fighting her in this recording. So we're gonna show you the boss footage from the test, which went way better and is like a, it's a far more accurate representation of how the fights with Amygdala normally go. Yeah. It just so happens that the one during the actual guide run that we done happened to be particularly bullshit. Um, and by bullshit, I mean Amygdala actually did give me a, a good challenge. Yeah. So at this point, this is where that one last wandering nightmare shows up finally. Yeah. I spotted it in the distance. I was like, I'm getting it. And it almost got away. I know, bastard. Nah, it wasn't. I wasn't allowing that to happen. Um, and I think we're going to show you a nice little uh, a nice little sight up here as well, because I showed Tony this, because um, he never spotted it as well. If you look, just, um, if you stand on the edge of this bridge and look down, you can see like the sails and the masts from all the ships. And we know it's ships because that one just down to the left, there's actually a crow's nest in it if you look close enough. But it's, it's, it's just pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. It's nice. And now I'm going to go fuck up Amygdala. <laughs> I'm finished taking nice views from a Windows desktop. Now it's time to beat the shit out of her. So cue the transition into the good boss fight. Yep. And... Boom. There it is. Almost perfect. I know. Okay, so the deal with Amygdala is... Hit her arms. Um, so we're going to extend the saw cleaver because it has a really nice reach. You can actually hit her with the saw cleaver extended R1s when she's just like that, as you've seen there. So we're just fucking annihilating her. Now, you kind of want to get close under her head and use the overhead, the, the R2s, because you... The R1s. R1s, R1s overhead R1s. R1s, yeah. Yeah, R2s are horizontal attacks. So, so as you can see, you can just get the head really well. Now, yeah. you obviously want to dodge that attack, that's, never, that's not an issue attack at all. It's this, right, you want to get really, this is kind of your main opening almost, uh, but you want to get really far away when she lifts her arms up and then you've got a clear shot to just run at her face, essentially. Yeah, so because she's buffed right now, um, there's a lot of attacks that she's doing that are really annoying to deal with, like she has a bunch of AoEs and shit like that when she slams her hands now. All you need to do to combat that is just quite simply delay your pushes by about a second. It does mean that you're getting one less hit, and yeah, and it's kind of annoying, but unfortunately, as you can see there, if I just stood still, I wouldn't have taken that, but I tried to advance and get under her. So, she also has a jump attack, and you're gonna see me exploit something that's pretty fucking stupid. Now, the issue with the jump attack is, actually, is if you're not directly under her, 
you want to roll f- roll far away. Yeah, roll towards her tail from the direct like the direction she was facing when she jumped. See, you essentially, want to roll a bit what past what just her. happened there is essentially what you want to happen. Yeah. So, also, attacking her arms actually, you don't necessarily when she slams her arms down, you don't necessarily need to go, need to go for her head. You can go for the arms. Yeah. As well. The arms and her head are a weak point. You can keep attacking her legs as well, and eventually you will break her. You, like she'll go through an animation where she like lifts her leg. She then takes more damage to the leg after that point. It's like breaking her armor. Um. So what you see there was that she's doing jump attack. So I'm just standing still. Yeah. If she so, stands still directly under her, the jump attack misses you completely. Yeah, but otherwise, if she jumps and you're not directly under her, then you need to get the fuck away because the feet have quite big yeah. hitboxes if you're so, not right yeah, under her. I'm about to break her uh, her armour on her legs here before I kill her. Right there, you can see that she lifts her leg. That now means that she takes extra damage from there. So she takes very low damage on her legs and tail because she's really armoured there. So that's why we're saying the arms yeah. and head are definitely the points you want to focus on. But when she starts spamming her jump attack, you can just like deal less damage and just keep breaking the poise or breaking the armor on her leg and try and get some cheeky hits into her face. So right there I got hit with it because I was in the wrong place because I rolled backwards and I tried to just guess it. But right here I'm in the perfect spot. Um, and we're going to show you a, a clip of attacks that, that can stop your aggressive push. So she's using like, these are like some of our laser beam attacks where she like ignites the trail essentially. Um, a lot like the one in Yahargul actually. If you've yeah. ever seen, if you've seen it by this point, there's one in Yahar Guild that does that. So no. this is what I mean. Where I'm under, and she's using these really annoying moves. So that right here, I have to delay my push before I can go in, and it just transitioned out. I had to wait like a half second before I could actually go in for the attack on her head because yeah. of that AOE. You want to be careful. Get, I mean, maybe it got patched or something, but you want to be careful get her under because she has those stupid arm swipes. I don't. I don't you. think. I don't think it's, that it's been patched. I just think that this was a particularly good like run yeah. from, for like from her side of things a particularly good run at the boss so um i'm uh, i'm surprised that she gave me that much of a run for it but the second the fight that we did show you like the full fight we showed you went a lot smoother than the yeah. other one a lot smoother so back to the hunter's <clears throat> dream I and mean, this is it for this episode obviously uh, yeah just level up with your remaining souls um repair all your gear and of course um at this point, you might you might, because we're about halfway through the game, you might be getting low on vials and bullets, so it could be a good idea to go farm Central Yarnum for a little for a little bit, like maybe just twenty minutes to get your vials restocked and bullets restocked, yeah. just in case you're running low. It's a little bit tedious, yeah, but you can probably get about you probably ha- get like fifty vials and bullets in maybe about half an hour. No, I mean if you, it's it, the 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 run to get twenty is like four minutes. Oh well, then there you go. You can just do that a few times, and that's you guaranteed to um, be stocked up for the next area. Yeah. But um, that's it for this one, guys. Every single item in Nightmare Frontier. Hopefully, you guys got a good like idea of the layout. It is a very difficult place to map out. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, you guys managed to to follow us quite closely there. Yeah. So um, you know, obviously links on screen. Um. And... Yeah. You can go back to the last video where we done Bergenworth. And the next video we're going to be doing will be uh, Yahar Gil, where we'll be taking on Parl and the One Reborn, um, and that leads us on to pretty much the last, the last part of the game as well after One Reborn, which is really good. Okay. So um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah. Bye.